Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie, and today I'm taking you on yet another adventure. We're making our way through the backyard of an abandoned villa, and we have to go through this forest to reach the abandoned house that we are filming today. It's quite a thick forest, pretty lush, in the middle of a big town. Wow, they had an enormous backyard, everybody. Literally enormous. Oh, look at this. There are a few cars left behind here in the backyard. They still have even license plates on them, but they are completely decaying. A Citroën Visa. And this is a Renault, but I'm not sure about the model. Wow, the spider webs all over it. <laughs> it does not open anymore. <laughs> what a crazy oh, sound. Is the other side open? Okay, well, take a look. Look at this. All the spider webs here. <laughs> just the spider crawled underneath there. <laughs> the doors are just falling out. Oh my god, what a sight. They have been here a long time. Okay, let's go. I see the house here in the distance through the tree line. I don't know if you can see it. But... We have reached the house. This is the story of a very inspirational French woman, Mrs. Frisson Goulette. A lovely French lady who lived on the countryside together with her husband and two children. They had a very wonderful life. But unfortunately, her husband passed way before her and left her alone in this grand manner. The loss of her husband came at a price. Mrs. Frisson Goulet couldn't cope with it and started to develop an addiction to hoarding. The aftermath can still be seen to this day in this abandoned manor. Boxes with random artifacts are stacked until the ceiling and they created a, some sort of maze throughout the house. Only a few rooms in this place are still livable, but they are very beautiful and historical. It's truly a sight to behold and we today are gonna wander through the maze and discover the history and artifacts that are left behind scattered throughout it. Let me now take you throughout this enchanting French mansion and show you the life of this lovely French lady. I'm in the mansion, I'm in the manoir of Mrs. Frisson Colette, the French woman that left this place behind in the state that it's right now. This place is totally crazy. <laughs> there are like mountains and mountains of things that she hoarded throughout her life in this place. It's like a true maze. I'm gonna take you throughout it because there are some beautiful rooms scattered throughout the mansion and we're gonna try to reveal some things about the life of Mrs. Frisson, Colette and her family. Really excited for this one? I hope you are too. So let's start this epic exploration. In front of us here we see the winding staircase leading up to the top floor. And over there you can see boxes and boxes of things that she hoarded throughout her life. But that's for later on in the video. The things that we see there go back to 1960. The spiderwebs are taking over this place. But let me show you 
the hallway that we are standing in right now. Because it's quite spectacular in my opinion. They had this stove in here. And as you can see behind the stove, here are the coals that they used to fuel up this fireplace. And lots of boots as well. Because it's a very big field behind the house, like we just saw. Mrs. Frisson Goulet. She lived in this place, together with her family. And throughout her life, she was obsessed with collecting and hoarding stuff. She had a textile company, not far from this place. I'm really eager to see how that place looked like. Wow. And over here in the middle of the room, you can see this big mountain of things that's just stacked because probably she didn't have room anymore to put things in this place. And right next to it, we have this beautiful cabinets where she displayed all the plates that she was very proud of. Flower designs on them. Quite spectacular. Beautiful fake flower underneath, of course, after 11 years of abandonment, a flower can survive. Oh, this is very nice. This is probably a hand-painted painting. You can see a woman and a man and two children in a field wandering around. Wow. From here, more cups and plates. A beautiful, beautiful cabinet. Wow. And to this side, even more stuff that she hoarded. <laughs> no, this is not hoarding stuff, this is general antiques. As you can see, we have a scale over here. In this cabinet, she had all the blankets. Some notes over here, I'm not gonna go too close because they might reveal some clues about this place. And that's something I don't want. Okay, let's go further into what I believe is the kitchen. Look at the place. <laughs> How can you live in a place like this? In my opinion, this must be the worst house from a hoarder that I've ever seen. It's not like junk, but she had so many boxes that she all labeled with different things that you might thought ever to use in life. But like you see, most of the things we don't need. I need to tell you all something. I in my life try to stray for minimalism. I try to minimize the things that I have in my life to 50 items, except for clothing. But this is just crazy. Why do you need so much stuff in your life? There is no use for it, as you can see. Oh, she couldn't even use this incredible exhauster anymore. You can see the exhauster with the pipe, the chimney, and then I see some beautiful tile here in the back. It's probably a stove behind here, but now completely covered with all the boxes that she gathered over her lifetime. And this was the kitchen that she last used in her life. Totally overthrown all the things right on here. You can see here, these are appliances for the kitchen they wrote on here. After she passed away, the family did not even bother to come in here and clean the stuff. Because they knew how much work it would be. The last dishes that she washed up and put on the drying rack over here are still there after 11 years. I always test out the water. Sometimes it still runs in these French places. Wow, this is just totally crazy. You have a coffee machine here, her oils, even her goatlets to use to take things out of the oven. It's not like dirty in here, but it's just the amount of stuff that gets me. And then we have over here, in front of the house, 
the door that has not been opened for 11 years. Spiders are taking it over. Ivy is growing on the outside. <laughs> well, we even have a bug, bug sitting here on the door, just chilling. And we are wandering now into her bathroom. A very tiny bathroom, to my opinion. For such a big manner. Her back scrubber is still here. There are still some shampoos, shampoos in the bathroom, in the bathtub. Wow, spiderwebs all over the ceiling. Oh, this is cool. This is like a little box that says toiletries to take on travel. Toilet voyage. These are like little toothpaste, shaving stuff for the man probably. Ooh and her bath ropes and towels are also still here. Wow, 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 wow. I'm back in the kitchen right now and here on the floor you can see there are hundreds and hundreds of newspapers, but they all seem to be the same newspapers. Why in the world would you save the same newspapers? Oh my God, what kind of room are we ending up in right now? So many trash bags. I think this leads to the basement. Let me just check that out first before we go further in the home. Because over here she probably stored the most stuff. Up here, again, lots of spiderwebs. Oh, I see a wine cellar in, in the back there. Sort of a wine cellar. Wow. Hundreds of bottles of wine and bed is flying around this room. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna go out of here. I'm gonna go out of here. Whoa. It's somewhere in the basement right now. Those are the true explorations. Places like this, crazy places. And here. We have the house completely decaying after the 11 years of abandonment. More places to store wine. And even more boxes and crates over here. Wow. Look at the backyard. Nature is completely taking it over. At the end of the video, I'm gonna take you back through the backyard and see if we can see anything else that's of interest. But now, let's head back into the house. Over there in the distance, you can see the hallway that we were just inside. But here to the right, we end up in another room. And I think this used to be the dining slash living room as well. Look at this place, it's actually quite big. A family of six could sit here I have found out that they had two children, but I don't know about more children, so it might be a possibility that they had some more children than two. Two I know for sure, but more I'm not quite sure about. Wonderful dining table, oak wood, with the chairs in front of it. I noticed this computer here at the end. Tektronic, wow, look at it. They were, of course, very rich. Back in the day, these pieces would cost thousands of euros. And because of their richness, they could afford it, of course. A television behind there. Oh, look at the carved wall. I don't actually know. Is it a statue or something like that on the wall? Completely carved, a horse carriage, a farmer. Working the fields. Tapestries on a wall. Fascinating. The contrast between the junk rooms, I'm gonna call them, and these wonderful, completely furnished rooms is just a world of difference. I think this used to be... I at first thought it was a coffee machine or something that you would press it down, press the beans through it, but I'm actually not sure right now. 
seems that there's some sort of liquor in there. If anybody knows what you would store in here, please let me know. I'm quite curious about that. I love these candle holders that we have at the back here. Oh, I've not looked at the fireplace yet. It's also quite fascinating. Fire screen in there, the last ashes when she lit it up. It seems like we also have some sort of a crest in there. Beautiful fireplace. <laughs> and the tapestries that they would put in front of it are also totally amazing. Two seats and they could watch television over here in this room. Wow. I think this was the outside of the house. Yes, this is the outside of the house. Oh my God, and we can see a little child, somebody in this place was a painter because this is the same style as the one we saw in the hallway. And then still here in the room, we have this candle holder with now lights in there and beautiful crown molding. <sighs> Take a deep breath and get ready because now we're gonna go through the real maze of the house. Okay. Let's venture forwards. <laughs> we have the front door over here. The people came into the house and we are now behind the wall of trash <laughs> because there is the hallway with the winding staircase and the stove. And for some sort of weird reason, there is an upholstery chair, actually a very beautiful one here in the middle of that hallway. But let's go further. I have to put on my light, I see, because otherwise we're gonna <laughs> not see anything in that darkness over there. We have a hat of Frisson Golette over here, of multiple hats actually, that she probably used to go outside of the house with. Lots of things on the ground. Oh. Here the storage mess begins. She wrote in every single box what it used to be. Couverture, that's uh, dining, uh, like plates and cups and things like this. These are mostly for the kitchen. This is for the bureau. Fourniture, uh, furniture for the bureau, it says over here. I think maybe like things that you would need in the bureau, not furniture for the bureau. So many boxes left here. And this room is also completely covered. You can see some books in the back, but I can't go in here. It's just too scattered. Okay, let's try to make our way through this mess and see what's at the end of it. Here are probably some binders that hold documents of the company that she once had. New books, it says on here. More banana boxes, tomato boxes. Lots of furniture in this room here to the side. And even more boxes. Books, it says on that one. Wow. And here we have some beautiful plates on the wall. And this leads us into this fantastic living room. Totally fantastic. The contrast between these two, this one and this one, just couldn't be bigger in my opinion. <laughs> you would never expect a room like this in a house like this. Wow, well, let's start from right to left. We have this wonderful mock-up sailboat here to the side. Siglo XVI Galzea. Wow, this one is just fantastically made. Beautiful replica, the masts and everything, probably completely handmade. We have here this face with a church on it. Let's see what's in this wonderful cabinet. Glasses, some boxes as you can see. But she didn't hoard things in this cabinet. That's also very fascinating. More boxes and glasses. Okay, let's 
close that up. Oh, above the doorway. I thought at first it were weights, but these are little shot glasses for liquors, as you can see. They're all just placed above the door on display. And this was the little tree that they were on. Now we have these doorways that are pretty stuck right now. They're built in cabinets, revealing lots of things in there, like plates and cups and whatever you would put in these. I'm totally in love with the sitting area here in the middle of the room. Beautiful sofas on either side of it. And then in the middle of the room, we have these cannons on the table. Wow, wooden cannons. <laughs> and even this wagon that holded the cannonballs on display. Fascinating. And in front of the sofas, we have these elephants that you could put your glass of drink or a plate of food on when you were sitting here. It must have been a wonderful sight sitting here in this living area. I can really imagine myself here in front of the fireplace with the woman right next to me, the family around here, just having a chat about life. I think it must be wonderful to be in this place. You have the fireplace over here that would be lit up back in the day. The tools for the fireplace right next to it. And they were big fans of elephants, as you can see. Many, many elephant statues in this house. Wow. They also used to hold statues or other artifacts back in the day. We have this Indian elephant, this lion, red Chinese lion, that's in front of the gates of the Forbidden City in China, I think. A vase with flowers in there. A Chinese vase right next to it. And then right next to the seat, we have this newspaper holder. What a room, everybody. Even more cannons over here. Oh, this one. Oh, it was heavy. Oh my God. That's incredibly heavy. <laughs> Even these statues of night armor. Wow. On the lamppost. A wall clock, Chabon Accuté, a cassette wall clock with a beautiful golden clock face. Fascinating piece again. Oh, it just literally falls apart. Excuse me for that, everybody. But that's just how it goes after these years of decay. And I now notice what this is. This is the weight that used to be in here, but because there is only one weight left in this piece. As you can see, it's totally the same. Multiple books in this display cabinet. Again, more statues. This is the Taj Mahal, I think, in, Ch in, in India. I've been there. One of the world, seven world wonders. Enormously big books. And here you can get a glimpse of the outside. They even had a greenhouse in this backyard. There's one more built-in cabinet that I have to check out. Ah. Oh, this one seems to be locked. Ah. No, it doesn't open up. Let's go further into the remainder of the house. Let's now venture up the stairway to the top floor. <laughs> Even here in the stairway, the spiderwebs are taking over. And these are the boxes that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Wow. Books, books, souvenirs, uh, and new books, 1900, uh, 1889 to 1922 it says on here. 
telephone from the children. Okay, I want to check this one out. I want to check this one out. Let's place it down and let's open it up. The rope is pretty tight. I got it open. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm gonna put this back, of course, at the end. We have a children's telephone, clear tone, flashing light, ringing bell, intercom, house phone. Can I get this open with one hand? And in here we have telephones for the children. These were ones that you would plug into the main and then somehow the children could call from room to room, but not outside, I think. Really cool find. Okay, let's box this up again and let's put it back. The box is back into place and let's now venture through the top floor and see the most private part of this house. <laughs> Gadgets, it says over here. Okay, of course, what did you expect? More boxes upstairs. Ooh. We have one bedroom to this side, completely stacked full with all these boxes. And then we have a very clean one here to the end. And I think Mrs. Colette used to sleep in this one at the last days of life. Let's turn up the light a little bit. And let's go through this room. Ooh, a box of Cluedo here at the end. Some children see, it's definitely some children have been in this place, have slept in this place and have lived in here. We got an enormous vault in front of us with an A to Z locking combination that you would need to put in. But somebody has tried to break into this vault. <laughs> you could barely fit your hand in here. They did a really good job of opening it up. It must be really tough. Okay, fascinating room with even a fireplace in the middle of it that would be lit up back in the day because there was no central heating in this house. A little bureau here as well with an African face mask laying here and I love this clock statue with a woman holding, holding a harp I think it is. Yes, it's a harp but a very small one. I don't know if you call this a harp. If somebody knows, just tell me in the comment section. And it's not a woman, it's a man. It also has a scroll. Here we can get a glimpse again of that overgrown backyard. Wow. And then the still made bed where Mrs. Colette used to sleep. Flower blanket on there. This is a religious symbol. People back in the day in France were of course very religious and you always see religious symbols around these houses. I love the light switches that they had in here. There seems to also be an attic, a stairway leading up. Let's go up there and let's check that out. Oh, <laughs> lots and lots of things up here. Chavers on the floor. Oof. And she used to come up here to put up her laundry, as you can see. So many things. We got a sewing machine stand over here, a frame of a bed, and I'm not gonna even wander over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I wanna see it. A statue, more bed frames over here. Wow, look at these praying chairs that are behind there. They are wonderful. 
Where are we gonna end up? More boxes, like we could expect. Oh, look at this petrol station that, that was made for children, a miniature skill. Petrol station, wow. And even a car elevator here, to the left of it, right of it. We are back in the hallway right now, and we can see two more rooms to this side. And I think we can safely assume that there were more than two children in this place because we saw six chairs at the dining table down there and we have already found four or five bedrooms. Yeah, with these included, I think four. And this is the fifth one. And this might also have been Mrs. Goulette, her last bedroom. This one seems to be more lift than the other one. A telephone right next to the bed. And with a listening device at the end of it as well. And here we have the still made bed with a supporting pillow at the end of it. Two pillows. I think she slept in this one. This one really seems the most lived room. I also have lots of clothes in here from her. Lots of scarves and dresses. And even more elephants. I think she was the one who put the elephants in the house and who was like, who adored these animals. Oh, a wonderful summer dress in here. Many more clothes of her. And the spider webs are also in there. In this room, there was also a fireplace. Okay, here we have her name. Madame Frisson Goulette. It says on here. That's wonderful, but let me turn that around because there are lots of points of interest to find this place and I don't want to reveal it. A Buddha as well over here. And this is very common for France to have like a sink in a bathroom where you can just wash yourself up, but don't have a bathroom in your bedroom. A dividing screen as well to dress up behind. Lovely little sink. Her vanity where she made herself beautiful in the morning. It's not like a vanity, but it has some cosmetic stuff right here. Religious artifacts above it. I love this waiver that she had here. Wonderful to see this all. Oh no, I almost forgot in this room. We also have this little piano, this, this miniature piano here in the corner of it. <laughs> I was literally ready to walk out again and go back into the hallway. But look at this piece that we have over here. Michael Sonnet, it says on there. And it still plays. I'm not gonna make too many tunes in here, but wow. What a wonderful piece of decoration. Just made it outside it's a beautiful day here in france and i also want to show you the front of this enormous mansion actually you wouldn't see it from the inside but it has so many shutters and windows wow i really did not expect that the front looked like this we're gonna take a stroll through the backyard right now and show you what's left in here let me first give you one big overview of this incredible place before we go into that backyard. Fascinating. 
that's a, oh, it, might there be a car or something like that? Of course, we have to check that. No, again, more boxes. <laughs> what did you expect? I also wanted to take a look at the greenhouse that's here. Let's head over there first. This place is so overgrown, totally unimaginable. Restoring this place is almost impossible. Yes, here we are at the greenhouse. I still gotta make my way to these prettiest plants. Oh my God, this is crazy. Welcome inside the greenhouse of the mansion. I can't walk far in here, but you can see they had some grapefruits in here. Vineyard, a little vineyard with some plants and pots. Wow. Okay, everybody, we've ended up again at the car, cars. We're just gonna take a few more pictures. I'm gonna give you one last glance at it before I end off this wonderful video and this fantastic exploration. Wow, I truly enjoyed it. Rune, can you take over the camera, please? Because I'm gonna thank everybody for watching this week's video. I oh, truly want to thank Mrs. Golette for her life, her story, and that I could bring it to the internet forever. If you like this week's video, please, <laughs> let's see if it opens up, oh, it's completely closed. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you want to see more of these explorations. Comment something down below in the comment section. There's also a link in the description for Patreon. This is just my hobby and I really love it. So a small donation would make the world for me. Thank you very much. I see you next week with another crazy episode. Bye-bye. I love you very much.